Greetings, friends and colleagues. It's Sean Elvis. Beautiful day here in Denver, Colorado. And I got another message for you guys. Um, so let's get into it. Um, you guys remember when you were a kid? Um, you know, like, <laughs> uh, we used to think how, we, you know, we knew better than mom and dad, right? You know, I, I, and then you grow up, become a teenager or whatever, young adult. And then you do the same thing and you think, man, I know better than God, right? You know, I remember thinking, I don't really need to read my Bible, right? I, I know what's right and wrong. I got this. <laughs> um, and how easily we allow ourselves to be deceived, right? Because <laughs> then we don't uh, read our Bibles and uh, we don't listen to our parents when we're kids and we get in trouble, right? That's how it is. That's how it goes. You see, God has an authority structure in, in that he set forth um, in his creation. Uh, God, is, God is at the top, obviously. And then below God, you have a husband. And below the husband, you have the wife. And then at the bottom, you have the children, right? And each one is supposed to honor and respect the one above them, right? Each one has a duty to um, honor uh, their authority figure that God has set up above them. You know, and friends, today I'm preaching on the fifth commandment in the Bible, which says, honor thy father and thy mother. And let me just pull it up here. Um, it's actually in the Old Testament and the New Testament. So I found the scripture in the New Testament, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 2 says, Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. So just a, a, quick, a quick little side note here. This is the, the commandment that promises that if you obey this commandment, you will live a long life. Right? It actually says that. It's built into the commandment. It says if you follow, if you honor your father and mother, you will live a long life. Anyway, you know, each one of us has a mother and father, right? So forget about all this gay marriage stuff uh, nowadays where uh, people think that you could have two two dads and two moms. Like, you know, this is not a gender-bending mes- message. You know, that's garbage, right? That's That's wicked. It's sinful. It's perverted. It's not of God. You know, every person, my point is every person... Is, is if you're born and you're living, you have a mom and a dad. There's no escaping it, right? We're, we're each given one mother and one father. And, you know, we all have a duty to honor them, to make them proud of us, you know, and, and to, make them, to make our parents say, you know what, I'm proud that that's my child over there. Got all these kids, got all these kids running around. <laughs> Perfect sermon for the day. <laughs> kids need to listen to this. Anyway, um, you know, some people may think, well, well, I don't have a mom and a dad. You know, my, my mom or my dad, my, they left me or, or maybe they died or, or whatever the case is, right? But, you know, that doesn't relieve you of your responsibility because remember, everybody has a mom and a dad. Whether they're alive or dead, uh, whether they're with you or not, you know, it doesn't matter. You still have one, right? You still have them. So, you know, God's commandment still stands. You still need to honor them, whether they're alive, dead, whatever. Right? Too many people make the mistake um, of thinking that this verse means obey your parents, right? And and you know, children should for the most part obey their parents. You know, I mean in many cases that's obviously true. But you know, notice this 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 commandment is not to obey our parents. It's not saying our parents are God and they're the ones who um, tell us what right and wrong is, right? That's jo- that's the God of job. <laughs> But that's the job of God, right? Only God can tell us what is right and wrong. So the verse says, honor our, mo- our father and mother. Well, how do we honor somebody, right? Well, to me, the way I think of honor is, you know, we give somebody respect, the respect they deserve. And you might be thinking, well, my parents don't deserve any respect, Sean. You don't know my parents. They're, but they're some scumbags. They're some losers. They're, they're criminals, whatever, right? They abandoned me, whatever, whatever you want to say, right? But God says you need to at least give them a certain level of respect and honor just for the simple fact that they're your parents. Boom, just like that. God has already said, hey, look, they're your, they're your authority. You know, just the fact that you have parents, they already deserve some level of honor, you know? Remember, two wrongs don't make it right, guys. You know, if your parents are... Um, not the best parents or 
they're doing sinful things, you know, that doesn't make you justified in disobeying this commandment to not honor them. You know, like us men, you know, we can understand sometimes um, that God has rules for us. Like, for example, God has a rule that says you need to pray, right? We're commanded to pray. You know, in 1 Thessalonians 5, uh, the Bible says pray without ceasing. I mean, that's a pretty tough order. I mean, that's basically God telling us to pray all the time, right? Now, let's say you've been practicing You've been praying and praying and praying and obeying God's commandment. And God, let's say you, you pray, you know what, God, take away um, my sickness or take away my, my pain or whatever you might pray for, right? And let's say God doesn't do that. You know, let's say God, for whatever reason, does not take away our sickness, does not take away our pain. And we say to ourselves, well, why am I going to keep praying if God's not going to answer my prayer right but what we don't realize is God is answering our prayer right he always answers our prayer he'll either tell us yes no or wait <laughs> wait right but you know sometimes we think you know God's not answering the way that we want or the way that we expect him to and sometimes we justify ourselves and say well then I'm not going to pray right which is going against God because he told us to pray right since you guys want to understand what I'm saying here, right? And then, of course, God's not going to, he's going to be angry with us. And until we go to God and say, hey, please forgive me for not praying. Can can uh, can you forgive me? And then I'll start praying again. And God will forgive us. He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But, you know, <laughs> sometimes God says, when we, when we tell God, you know, God, you're not answering me the way I want, you know, and, and God tells us, child, you know, you don't understand. I didn't tell you to pray so you can get what you want, you know. I told you to pray to remind yourself that without me, you, you could have nothing, right? I told you to pray so that you don't forget that I'm your authority, that I'm above you, you know, and it's so easy to understand, you know, when you look at a little child, I see a lot of kids over there, but anyway, you can tell them, hey, you know, if you need anything, you can always come to me, right? Parents always say that to their kids, right? If you need anything at all, just come to me, you know? And then sometimes, you know, we might go to them or like like these little children over here might go to their parents and tell them, hey, I need, uh, I want some candy or, you know, I want, I want to stay up late or whatever. Right? And we might have to tell them no, right? And well, but you told me I could come to you whenever I needed something. It's like, yeah. But that doesn't mean you're going to get what, what you came to me for. Exactly, right? Because I'm looking after you. Now, that's not to say that um, the parents are always going to be good, uh, do what's good for you, right? And they're not going to abuse you. But that's that doesn't give us an excuse to throw a fit. You know what I'm saying? And do the wrong thing. In the same way, this is exactly what feminism has taught women. You know? They said, hey, look, don't go to your husband's. Um, you know, he's not going to be able to provide for you anyway, you know, and, and he might tell you no, and they called that abusive, right? You know, <laughs> he's going to be an evil, mean dictator, man. So, you know what? Don't even ever go to him. In fact, just be independent and only rely on yourself. You see, that's not how God set it up. God set it up to be, for, for the wives to be submissive to the husbands because the husbands are an authority, right? And it's, and it's not for their... Um, it's not so the husbands can abuse them, just in, just in the same way that uh, um, children aren't supposed to be um, in obedience to their parents because to give the parents the right to abuse them. No, it's, 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 it's because the parents know what's better. You know, the parents are stronger. You know, the Bible says that the woman is a weaker vessel. This is why she needs a husband to help guide her along. And... And, and yeah, you know, it's a vulnerable thing. You, uh, a woman has to be vulnerable to say, hey, you know what? I need you, husband. I'm going to sub, uh, subject myself to your authority because I need you to help guide me, you know? And if she doesn't open herself up to that vulnerability, she's never going to reap the benefits, you know? Just like a child, if he doesn't go to his parents and say, hey, I need you, um, he's not going to get the guidance that he needs. He's not going to get um, the comfort and whatever he needs, you know? Um, you see, 
where was I here? Oh, I wanted to tell a story, a quick story here in the Bible where Jesus, Jesus was a young child, you know, and his parents uh, went to Jerusalem for the Passover. They were from Nazareth. And, you know, after the, the feast um, of the Passover had ended, his parents returned to Jerusalem thinking that uh, little 12-year-old Jesus um, was coming back with them, that maybe they uh, went with um, some friends or some family because, you know, the whole family uh, went down for the feast. But you know what? They 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 took their day's journey and got back to Nazareth, and they, and they looked around and were like, "Where's Jesus? You know, he didn't come back. Did he stay in Jerusalem? Did he get lost? What happened?" And you know, it, it reminds me of the movie Home Alone, right? Where they, you know they fly to New York or whatever, and then they get to New York and they're like, "Where's Kevin? Kevin?" <laughs> right? Uh, but anyway, um, yeah. So they they ended up going having to go back to get Jesus, and 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 they found him. Three days. They took him three days to find Jesus, and they and they found him later. And and, uh, and and they said, and his mom said to him, he said, she said, uh, Jesus, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, and she was crying and everything. And she uh, she told, well, they found Jesus in the temple, uh, asking all the elders and the doctors and and you know the priests and the high priests, asking them questions. And and he was blowing them away with their questions and how smart he was and how fast he was learning and. But his mom kind of told him, hey, Jesus, uh, Joseph and I were worried about you. Why did you do this? You know, and, and Jesus uh, told her, he said, well, wh- um, he said, why are you so worried, mom? You know, didn't you know that I'm about my father's business? You know, and she didn't understand that he was talking about God the father. She thought he was talking about Joseph. And she was like, what do you mean? Your, your dad doesn't have any business here in, in Jerusalem, son, like. We don't get it. Like, let's go. We're going back. But anyway, he went back with them. But uh, the point of me uh, bringing this up is that, you know, Jesus didn't just blindly follow his parents. You know, he made sure his number one priority was obeying the Father in heaven. You know, because he knew that if he did what God told him to do, he would be honoring his parents. And he was kind of telling his mom, hey, you don't understand. I'm, I'm giving you high honors right now. Like, you don't understand. These people in the temple, they're... Uh, you, you are honored right now that you are my parents because they're seeing how respectful I am and how much I'm learning, how smart I am. You know what I'm saying? Because he was obeying God. He was seeking first the kingdom of God. He was learning about the Bible. He was in church. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, they couldn't understand that at the time, but later maybe they did. You see, it's always the case, you know, when we do the right thing, when we obey God, we are simultaneously honoring our parents, our husbands, you know, our God, whatever, you know, it, it, it's, 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 um, it's unavoidable. When you obey the commandments, you're honoring your parents. That's just all there is to it. You see, too often we use um, our authority figure as a reason to sin. You know, children see their parents do something wrong and they think, well, I'm justified in disobeying God too, right? And, you know, we, we see this all the time. Wives uh, see their husbands do something wrong and they think, well, he did something wrong, so I'm justified in and doing another thing wrong and leaving him or divorcing him or whatever, right? You know, and I mean, that's what feminism basically teaches, right? Because men are, because men, some men abuse their authority, then the wives think, well, we have to take away the authority of all the men, right? We can't trust any of the men, right? But that's not how God set it up, did he? You know, it's the same argument that the people who are trying to take the guns away the anti-gunners it's the same argument they use you know because some people uh, abused their gun rights and went and hurt people with their guns well now we need to take away the guns from everybody right no you see that's 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 not how god set it up now people who abuse their rights should definitely be punished absolutely that's not what i'm saying i'm not saying men who abuse their wives um or parents who abuse their children should get away with it um but taking away their authority is not the answer. Um, you see, in us men, uh, it's, it's hard for us because, you know, we're at the top. You know, this is a man's world. We're at the top of the authority structure. And we take a lot of heat when we screw up, you know, because we are expected uh, to be better. Because we have this high authority position. So everybody expects more of us. We're held to a higher standard. And when we screw up, uh, we set a bad example for those uh, uh, under us and we can cause them to stumble, right? And sometimes we could take it pretty hard, you know, and although it's a big responsibility, 
you know, you are not responsible for other people's choices, guys. You know, if your wife goes against God and dishonors you, um, that's not your fault, you know. Whether, whether, whether you set the good example or not, you didn't make the decision for her. Everybody has free will choice to obey God, right? You know, and if your children are getting out of line and being disobedient, you know, don't take it personal. You know, they have the freedom to make their own decisions. God said that he wrote his law in each one of our hearts. Everybody has a conscience and everybody will answer to God, right, for their choices. You know, but if you're not obeying the commandments as a husband, you know, then you shouldn't be expecting your wife um, to be obey, obeying them any better than you are. You know what I mean? That's what you would call a hypocrite, right? You know, and as parents, it's the same thing. You know, if you don't set the example for your children, then you shouldn't be surprised uh, or you shouldn't rebuke them or, or spank them or punish them when they're not uh, obeying the commandments, right? Um, like if you didn't, if you didn't say your prayers at night, and you go spank your kid for not saying his prayers. Uh, you're a hypocrite, and and you know that's not that's not righteous authority right there. Um, but you know what? You, you, you can't blame yourself. You can't you can't beat yourself up when um, your children get out of line and do the wrong thing. You know you got to be forgiving. You know, husbands, you need to forgive your wives. Parents, you need to forgive your children. And one thing I do want to mention about forgiveness is uh, you can't it's, you can't really forgive somebody. It's hard to forgive somebody if they don't come and ask for forgiveness. You know what I'm saying? Um, if somebody doesn't repent and say, I'm sorry, you really can't forgive them. Um, so, but if they do, if, they, if they're sorry for what they did, they recognize it and they come ask for forgiveness, absolutely, absolutely we should forgive them. Um, that, that, that's uh, how that's how we expect God to forgive us, right? So, you know. Anyways, we all need to humble ourselves. <laughs> that's my that's my message for the day, you guys. Um, that's my message for the day. I don't want this video to uh, drag on. So, you guys have a great day. I'm gonna go enjoy the rest of this day, and um, as always, I'm gonna give God the last word. You guys have a great day. God bless, and this is Sean Elvis signing off. See you later. I'm going to read from the Old Testament today. Old Testament. We're going to read a few short passages in Psalms, chapter 86, verses 11 through 13. Here we go. The Bible says, <clears throat> Teach me thy way, O Lord. I will walk in thy truth. Unite my heart to fear thy name. I will praise thee, O Lord, my God, with all my heart. And I will glorify thy name forevermore. For great is thy mercy towards me, and thou hast delivered my soul from the lowest hell. Amen.